has a school record 30 consecutive game winning streak at home, but this one away from the Joy Center at Marquette. Hey, how are you folks? Jason Horowitz, glad to be with you each and every week, breaking down some of the biggest college basketball games with some of the best analysts in the game. And this week, fortunate enough to be joined by Steve Lapis of CSTV from Washington, D.C., where he'll be calling a game Thursday before heading out to do even more this weekend. Steve, let's get into this one. Notre Dame certainly has come on strong of late. Ten straight wins. Luke Herringotti, Rob Kurz, they've been huge in the middle. Uh, the former was big in last year's win against the Golden Eagles as well with 22 points. What kind of matchup problem do they provide for Marquette's defense? Big matchup problems. Almost the same matchup problems that West Virginia had. And Laharen Gotti had a career game against West Virginia. Different when they play UConn the other day. Marquette, not a team that's dominated by good interior players. They get the, the, the crux of this Marquette team is their perimeter. They're a perimeter-oriented team. They don't have a lot of good big guys. So this is the kind of game that Haring Gotti and Kurz could go for big numbers on. So they have to be very careful. But one thing about Marquette. They do out-rebound their opponents by seven rebounds a game because they are a great gang rebounding team. Those three guards, McNeil, Matthews, and Dominic James, they're tough kids. They box out, and they go for the ball. But those two big guys could wreak havoc in this game. Well, the two big guys then for Notre Dame means a tough day for Usman Barrow and Lazar Haywood and Dwight Burke inside. Uh, those are the big guys that are going to have to deal with the guys for Notre Dame. Meanwhile, for Marquette, uh, got a scare in Tuesday's win against Seton Hall. Star point guard Dominic James, he sprained his wrist, taken to the hospital for x-rays that were negative. He said he should be fine and should be ready to go. If he is, what does he bring for this offense? But if he isn't, what is the offense missing? Well, if he's there, obviously, he's the guy who directs everything. Now, Marquette's home, so they're going to put intense pressure. One thing about those three perimeter players, and it starts with Dominic James, is the pressure that they put on the basketball. They make it so that you can't run your stuff. And he's the key because he's the guy who's guarding the ball. The other thing that Dominic James brings is he's the best perimeter player. He's the best three-point shooter of the three perimeter players. Now, they do have Dan Fitzgerald, who's a big kid, who can shoot threes. But of all the three perimeter guys that play the bulk of the game, Dominic James is the best three-point shooter. So not having him defensively and offensively would really be a big hit for Marquette. Well, let's assume he does play because he says he's going to go and there hasn't been any report out of Marquette that says he isn't going to go. Uh, what's the best way to defend the perimeter guys for Marquette? Play zone. Everybody's had success against him this year has played zone. All of a sudden, Bob Huggins calls up Tim Floyd in California's teaches him how to run a 1-3-1. He plays 1-3-1 the other day and really threw them way off. So they don't, they rely on slashing, getting to the basket. So this is a team that's not as comfortable playing against a zone and a zone is in Notre Dame's package. In other words, if you told Bobby Knight you need to play a zone, he's not playing zone no matter what. But these guys do play zone, so I can anticipate Notre Dame playing quite a bit of zone against Marquette in this game. Mike Bray taking a page out of Jimmy Beheim's school of thought defensively. Who do you like to win in this game? Well, I like Marquette. I like Marquette because they're home, and I think that their perimeter guys are going to put a lot of pressure on McAlarney and the rest of the Notre Dame perimeter. All right, Steve, thank you very much. We'll see if Marquette can pull off the victory and uh, hand Notre Dame its first Big East loss of the season. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, Jason. Folks, both were NCAA tournament teams a year ago. Mike Bray was the conference coach of the year. Keeps the things up the way that it's been going. He would be on his way to doing it again. The two tip it off Saturday at 2 p.m. Eastern. And for more on this game or any other this weekend, be sure to stay with CBSSports.com. Watch everything else on the CBS Audience Network. And also be sure to check out CSTV's Crystal Ball each and every Monday with Steve Lapis, among others, beginning January 28th. For Steve Lapis, I'm Jason Horowitz. Take care.